Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome into Oliver Rams High School for game one of the 2017 Oliver Rams Holiday Tournament. It's the Brockton Boxers, the Walpole Rebels. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, the not one, not two, not even five or six, seven-time award-winning director and producer and Emmy-nominated, but those are just stats and numbers. Newbie Ratto, Newbie, Brockton basketball undefeated, 3-0. First win of the year, an impressive 12-point victory over the third-ranked team in the state, the Marshfield Rams. This team looks good. I tell you what, Matt, this team is a wagon. This team's an absolute wagon this year. I think um, initially they have height. They have the speed. They have the agility. But it, it, what, I think what's most important, they have the work ethic, the work ethic and the attitude. So I'm excited to see what type of team um, they're going to be throughout the whole season. I think they should um, be able to be very successful in this tournament. And ultimately, you know, it's about gaining chemistry, gaining chemistry, playing together. And it and, and looks like initially early on they're having that chemistry, which I'm very excited to see. Whistle stoppage of conversation between Brockton coach Chris Connolly and the official. Important to note, Coach Connolly in his first season, only two returning starters from last year, four players overall, and only four that had JV experience last year. A very, very new team, and they're putting up good numbers. Fernandez down low is fouled. I'll tell you what, initially I like, I like the play of number 35, Jade Wint. Um, just being aggressive on the on the boards right there. Again, the offensive board setting up uh, her teammates for a potential scoring opportunity right there. Went with the ball out to Elizabeth Williams, the sophomore captain. Went now in the paint, spinning, shooting. Fernandez with the rebound up and in. I'll tell you what, just the twin towers right there in the inside. Nice power dribble right there by Went. Couldn't get it, but the offensive board cleans it back up. Great job by the brought to Boxer interior offense. Something we've seen numerous times this year from the inside tandem of the Brockton Boxers. They get five, six, seven offensive rebounds in a row and just keep pounding until the Rock goes home. Old fashioned basketball right there. Number 21 of Walpole, Jill White, called for a hit. Brockton will inbound this ball. Three team fouls against the Rebels. This is Williams. Williams in for Went. Went with a little bit of space off the glass and in. Unstoppable freight train right there. Power dribble to the basket. Up and in. Doesn't waste time. It is worth noting, Walpole is the home team in this matchup, and therefore Brockton is wearing their away black jerseys with a white stripe down the side of the shorts and red trim around the white numbers. Walpole and their home whites with orange and navy blue trim all around. I'll tell you what, great hustle right there by uh, Rebecca. Uh, Newbie credit hustling to the ground. I believe that was number 11 for the Brockton Boxers. Check that, that's Montero. Great hustle by her. And it looks like it'll be brought to box of basketball. Wow, what a beautiful gym here in all the I mean, This is outstanding. In front of the brand new $18 million addition, new auditorium next door. Double dribble called on at number 12. That is Josilma Montron. Had a chance to um, cover a Brockton Symphony concert as West Junior High was going through some renovations a uh, le couple years ago, so they actually held it here all over Ames. I mean, you want to talk about the state of the art. Beautiful. Auditor, auditor. Beautiful, gorgeous. Long two, no good. Offensive board for the Rebels. Number 20 ripping it down. That a was traveling violation caught on her, so it'll be a turnover. Good call by the referee. Emily Lund with the rebound and then the subsequent travel. 
And Alicia Fernandez keeps it herself off the rim and out, no good. And a jump ball called, excellent work there. Got to finish those layups right there. Got to finish the layups, you know, good job pushing the basketball on a fast quick opportunity, but layups are, uh, you can't give up those two points. That's a bunny right there, it's a bunny. Jayla Smith and Annalie Lorenzo into the game for Brockton. Lorenzo, the sharp shooter from behind the arc, has a number of three-pointers on the year and put up a huge game against the Marshfield Rams. Number 15, and now a three-pointer is good for Bridget Lanchester. Looks like to put on a full-court press right here. And it works. I think Brockton will lose the ball. And just like that, Walpole have a chance to take the lead. Selena Giampa and Jess Fitzgerald into the game for the Rebels. A little behind the back out to a three-pointer and another one knocked down. Good job driving to the basket, collapsing the defense, kick it back outside for the open three, another turnover. So that's three consecutive turnovers by the brought the boxes. What's going on here? That was Fitzgerald with the three-pointer. Eight to six now your score. The Rebels on top of the boxers. Halfway through the first quarter. Sydney Scales. Now down low, off the glass and in, number 20, Emily Lund. Puts the Rebels up by four. Now Fernandez to Lorenzo. Lorenzo back to Fernandez, top of the key, pump fake. Overhanded, bouncing off a couple of Rebels and now loose ball, scrum on the floor. And a jump ball called as the ball squirted loose. And Brockton will retain possession with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Lorenzo to Fernandez, no dribble, shot. And Walpole comes down with the rebound. Walpole starting off slow, but Since probably the six minute mark, it has been all Rebel. I tell you what, great passing, great offense, great spacing. Box has got to get a rebound over here. They got to box out. Fernandez does just that. Williams picks up the loose ball. Now three minutes to go in the first quarter. 10-6, Rebels on top of the boxers. Lorenzo in the corner being assaulted by Selena Ciampa. And, that, and when that happens right there, Matt, Sorry to cut you off. You gotta help out your teammate. You gotta run to the basketball. She's trapped on the corner. You gotta run to the basketball, get the ball, and make a play. Brockton calling their timeout in order to retain possession. When they inbound it again, there will be 12 seconds on the shot clock, 246 in the quarter. Hey man, I have a question though. So you're a producer of this game, right? The producer of the sporting stuff? Technically speaking. Okay, when is when, when are we getting food? A little hungry here. I got a little rumble in my belly. Got a little rumble in the middle my belly. of the game. Got a little tickle in my belly. Middle of the game. Okay. I figured everybody would. <laughs> figured everybody would still be full from uh, I'm Christmas not. leftovers. No, I am very hungry. You know what? You know why I say enter with the Patriots. You know where I realized what made the Patriots a first-class organization was. I was an intern, and I worked in the basement, literally in the basement of Gillette Stadium, locked in tapes. But you know what they did every Always single day? Feed the crew. They fed the crew from the interns all the way up to Bill William Belichick III. And that's why they won. Because when they, when they went out there on the field, they were full. They were full. Those players, Tom Brady was full. He was running on a full belly. That's why he won the Super Bowl. That's the secret. They were full. So you ever try the uh, the avocado ice cream? No. no. Fernandez with some space out to number 21. And she loses it down low. Ball still loose and another jump ball. And Walpole's going to take possession. 
A lot of big timers in the crowd today. I see all these spirits in the house. I see one of the Brockton boxer legends in basketball, Marcel Smith. Actually, daughter's playing on the team, Jayla Smith. Uh, one, of the, one of the best players I've come out of Brockton. Uh, South Junior High street ball legend. And star of Out of Bounds. Little bang bang play for Walpole. 12 6 now doubling up the boxers. Winner of this game goes on to face the winner of Oliver Ames and Needham. Ooh. That game coming up next on Brockton Community Access. You know, it, it's, it is um, tough to see the Rotary Tournament go, but it, 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 but when once when something goes and nothing replaces it, this is a you know good opportunity to see a lot of local teams compete against each other in a great facility. So this is exciting. Fernandez spinning with it, finding some space, and her floater is good. Wow, was that Hakeem Melajron right there? Great footwork. The hesitation. Cool, calm, controlled, calculated confidence. Seems like the first boxer points in about five minutes. Loose ball, Jayla Smith fighting for it. And Same there's an all-out scrum down low in the paint. Walpole comes away with it. A tip rolled against boxers, so no backcourt violation. Down low and number 42. Uh, number 40, rather, Natalia Amaral. You talk about size. Amaral's, she's got to be over six feet. I tell you what, the way the game is going right now, Matt, size is not a, a really deciding factor in the game of basketball. And I'll be honest with you, you know what's really changed the game? I've never seen one player change the game on our levels like he has, which is Steph Curry. I mean, the, the game right now is a perimeter game. It's either a three-point shot or a layup. There's no, there's no more mid-range game in basketball right now. Fernandez can't control the inbounds pass out of play as Brockton subbed four. Even when you watch a, a fast break opportunity, you'll have, if it's a three on two, you'll have two players running either side of the three point line. I mean, it's really incredible. I mean, you talk about those teams that change the way the game is played. I think Golden State, because not only when Golden State first broke out, you had Steph Curry and Klay Thompson slinging them from three, and that's how they were beating teams. Now you got KD on the inside. You got Draymond Green on the inside, and there's no way teams can defend both the perimeter and the paint at the same time. Exactly. It doesn't work. Well, I mean, the game is right now, if you're a seven footer and you can't shoot the three, then you're not really relevant in the game. The only seven footer that really has had some of a career doing that in the last few years has been Dwight Howard, just because he's so darn athletic and just stupidly skilled. But if you're not seven footer and can't shoot the three, you'll be sitting on the bench. Fernandez high off glass, no good. Brought down by number 20, Rebecca Tannis. Now Fernandez, a long two, no good. Over the back called on number 11, Montero. Neilani Montero having a huge game against the Barnstable Red Raiders. And I believe we have an injured boxer. And Alicia Fernandez. Fernandez on the boxer bench. 30 seconds to go in the quarter, a three second difference between shot clock and game clock. A three for Walpole is good, number 23, Ainsley Dundon. Now Williams looking for her first points of the day, instead turns it over to Amaral. Now it's Montron back the other way for Brockton. Three seconds to go. Williams, uh, last second floater off the glass. No good. The buzzer sounds. The first quarter has come to an end. It is 17 to 8. The Walpole Rebels on top of the Brockton Boxers. Newbie, we saw dramatic swing from the first couple of minutes when Brockton was dominating. Since then, the full court press, the three-minute period, Brockton didn't score. 
and three straight turnovers off inbound passes for the boxers. <sighs> well, that's my uh, that's my Skip Bayless side. I think the reason why the boxer box are struggling right now is, is really, really quite simple. It's two reasons. Number one, they're getting away from dominating the interior like they did in the first few minutes of the game. You have two opportunities with two players to do damage in the interior. You need to take advantage of those. Number two, turnovers. I mean, way too many turnovers by the Brighton Boxers. I will give credit to Walpole for good passing and good spacing on the offense. They're hitting threes. The threes are, for the most part, contested. I mean, you, you'll take that. But the Brighton Box offensively are not taking advantage of their strengths. The interior offense and, 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 and being able to dominate in the paint. I rest my case. Walpole and number 25, Amanda Minsk. So as the second quarter begins, I still have a tingle in my belly. So I do expect. So we went from a tickle to a tingle. Tingle, yeah. A little tingle in my belly. So I do expect to be hopefully fed by the end of these tournaments. Another great turnover. Steal. High off glass, no good offensive board for the Rebels. Montron called for the push. One must remember, it's only 2.45 in the afternoon. I don't want to hear the excuses. I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing the excuses I mean, today. I understand that the man in charge today, Paul Mandel. Bob Kraft, when I intern for the New England Patriots, fed us every morning. I understand that our man in charge today, Paul Mandeville, a little bit older, might like to have dinner a little bit earlier, go home and play some Mahjong with, with, with the crew. It's still only 2.45 in the afternoon. This conversation is over. Finger food, maybe. Cheese squares. We'll let that go. We'll let that go. Board for Elizabeth Williams. A minute into the second quarter. No team has scored yet in the second quarter. Rockin looking to do that. Fernandez down low is fouled on her way up. First free throws of the game for either side. Annalisa Fernandez to do the honors. Well, what a treat here today. Four games here. Quadruple header. Love it. For all you Love NBA it. fans, uh, Forget about Christmas. In your, your quintuple header, or whatever you want to call it, five games in a row. Come to Oliver Ames. It was excellent. And, you know, it was actually six games during Christmas. But um, great time. Tournaments everywhere going on to say I'm actually might head over to uh, to Lynn later on this week, check out a few tournaments over there. But a uh, very exciting time to be a basketball fan. What a time to be alive! In the words of Drake. Fernandez 2-2 two two at the line, 17-10. And Nelani Montero with the rebound to Elizabeth Williams. Williams. Calm, cool, collected, trying to get it to Jade Went, Went didn't know the pass was coming. And a travel called against Minsk. It's a great last name. Amanda Minsk. Yeah, it is a fantastic that is the, last name. the village in Russia where my great grandparents are from. Oh, okay. Fun fact. I could this much. <laughs> you couldn't see that on camera, but Newbie just held out his arms nice and oh, wide. Yeah. Fernandez is good off the glass. Great job right there going and tacking the paint, being aggressive in the inside. Five-point ball game is Brockton 
He's trying to claw their way back into it. Three-pointer for Walpole, no good. Williams, an uncontested rebound. And a subsequent turnover, ball on the floor again. And a timeout Good called timeout by right Walpole. there, because it would have been a travel had they not called that timeout. The best thing about these holiday tournaments is seeing teams you don't normally see. So the eight teams playing today, Walpole, Brockton, Oliver Ames, and Needham for the four girls teams. The boys teams, South Boston, Brockton, Oliver Ames, and Cardinal Spellman. South Boston, I didn't know they had a team. <laughs> Never heard of that. That's awesome. Of course, in the Rotary Tournament last year, we had Charlestown, Providence Classical, BC High, and the Brockton. Is Charlestown in this, in this tournament? Charlestown is not in this tournament. So who, who do you got for the boys? It's uh, Oliver Ames, Brockton, East Boston, who else? South Boston, South Boston. and Spellman. Spellman. This should be fun. A couple of Brockton teams. This should be a lot of fun. And the potential for an all-Brockton final should Cardinal Spellman and the Boxers prevail. Spellman always puts out a pretty good team each year. Winning the title back, I believe it was 2013. Long three is good for the Rebels. Yeah, I think it's time to contest the three and put a hand in her face. That was Amanda Minsk. Williams to Jayla Smith, back to Williams. To Fernandez. Brockton's gotta stop trying to force the ball inside. You wanna get the ball inside, newbie, you gotta drive. I agree, Matthew. Out of play off of Walpole. 4.51 to go in the second quarter. It's 22 to 12, Walpole on top of Brockton. Dangerous baseball pass. Brockton slowly but surely moving it up the court. <laughs> Williams finally able to handle the inbound pass. Went setting the pick, getting it back all the way in. I think she was fouled on the way Good up. Good play though, I like that offense. Nice pick and pop to the basket. And it's gonna be out of play off of Walpole. Jayla Smith pressuring. Montron in for Wint. Wint alone is fouled and will be at the line for two shots. Jill White called for the block. So one thing I'm noticing about this gym, first of all, we're located in the corner. Down low, underneath the Brockton basket. Is it me or is there an abnormal amount of space between the backboard and the end of the court? Like there's a lot of room in play underneath the backboard. But I have no idea what you're talking about. It looks normal to me. I literally this, have no this idea probably, what you're talking about. There's probably four feet between the rim and the end of the court. You know, actually, that's actually a, a semi-decent point. That is actually interesting. I, I see what you're saying now. One of your few good points. You're gonna, you're gonna your look at life. it, and then you're gonna see the, well, you're gonna take that three. Elizabeth Williams, wide open. Now Jade Wint takes a three and no good. Just off the mark. 
Lund with the rebound for the Rebels. Walpole's got some crisp passing. And a three is no good. This one ping-ponging to Williams. Williams hail Mary to Fernandez. Fernandez nice. had it slapped out of her hand. And I'm going to rule this a Walpole ball. That was a nice pass right there. Accurate pass. Got to be a little more aggressive. Put it right to the hoop. Nice pass, so good thinking. Talk about the play by the Walpole defender. The block from behind, slapping it out of Fernandez's hands and forcing it out of play off of the boxers. Fernandez with it now. And another one tipped out by the Rebels. Jocelyn Montrond in for Nelani Montero and Lorenzo in for Smith. Williams top of the key to Fernandez. Fernandez loses it, another turnover for the boxers. Rebels on the other end out of play off of Brockton. Jamari Johnson now into the game for Brockton. Stop and pop for two, no good off the back of the rim. Jade went with the rebound and a foul and that will put Brockton into a shooting situation. A hit called against Selena Giampa. Brockton has only, has only scored five points here in the second quarter. One and one shooting situation for the boxers, the eight team foul against the Rebels. Still three minutes to go in the second quarter. Went good on her first to earn the second shot. Twenty-two fourteen. Now Brockton trailing by eight. And a violation called against Brockton, so the second shot does not count. 22-14. Plenty of time left for Brockton in this first half to really take charge of the foul situation that Walpole has put themselves in. Williams being hassled by number 15, Sidney Scales. Now in for Johnson. Johnson out to Montron for three, and it's no good off the back of the rim. Win. Fouled on her way down. I'm just going to say it's a Brockton ball, no foul. Williams to inbound, forcing it to Jade Wint. Now Wint scrapping for it, and a jump ball. How's it a jump ball when she sat on her head? That, this is blasphemy, that's a foul, she sat on her head. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know that rule was put in? Jeez, sitting Louise. on someone's head is now legal. <laughs> that's a jump ball now? It's page 64. Section three, apparently, apparently Article I F. Memo. A three for Walpole is good. Number 24, Selena Giampa. Putting the Rebels up by 11. Jamari Johnson to Montron to Williams. To Wint inside, her floater is good. Basket's not going to count. Oh, are you kidding me? Now nine team fouls against the Rebels. Number 20, Emily Lund is in some foul trouble. Went no good on her first. 
The next foul against Walpole will put Brockton in a double bonus. Automatic two shots. Another three for Giampa is good. 28 to 14. The boxers down by 14. Now Lorenzo hawks up a three, no good. Lanchester with the rebound. Short two blocked by Johnson. Not a playoff of Walpole as Walpole is going to continue their full court press. 109 to go in the second quarter. This one is oh, all Georgia. the way Jeez, out of play to the other side. Trainer here. Pay Her, attention. Louie just tore his ACL. The basketball under the table hit his shin. He tore his ACL. He's done for the year. Of course, that's a re injury from when you decided to. Race against Vanessa Clairvaux. Absolutely. I did try to stop that. I stuck my foot out, tried to stop it. Illegal screen called against Giampa. I don't think I've ever seen an illegal screen called in high school. 105 to go, Brockton with it. Jade went all the way in, her floater is good. 28-16 now, Brockton down by 12. Went with the rebound. Now Jade went high off glass, no good. Fernandez ripping down the board, getting another offensive rebound before Walpole is able to grab onto it and send it the other way. Shot clock is off under 30 seconds to go now, 25. And some change, Annalicia Fernandez behind the back. Takes a two that is tipped. Jade Wint coming down with the loose ball off the glass and in. Jade Wint, yeoman's effort in the last few minutes for the boxers. Lunch pail right there, lunch pail. Hard hat. A three for the Rebels, no good. Another Brockton rebound. A football pass is well off the mark. The buzzer sounds. Brockton down by 10 going into the half. 28 to 18. Newbie, your thoughts on the first half? Hey, you know what? Walpo is on fire from the three point line. Their, in, their offense from the perimeter has been phenomenal. And brought the boss has got to do a better job contesting. And on, on the boxer side, they got to do a better job going and attacking the basket and take advantage of their height. Well, it's 28 to 18. Hi, the Mom. boxers trailing the Walpole Rebels at halftime of game one of the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason, because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels, because love has no labels. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize, You feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. 
no one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just listen. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into all of Rams High School for second half action of game one of the annual holiday tournament between the Walpole Rebels and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, seven-time award-winning director and producer, Emmy-nominated, Nubi Ratto. Nubi, it's been an interesting first half. Brockton dominating the first few minutes, and since then, it has been all wall pull all the time. You know, Matt, this is good. Three-point shot right there cuts it to a seven-point deficit. But, you know, it's good to see the Brockton boxes get into a little adversity right now. See if they're going to fight through. It's a good test for them early on. The undefeated boxers coming in at 3-0. and oh. Wins against... Marshfield Barnstable as we have a foul. A hit called against Jade Wint. Despite the brought the box playing really not the best ball here, they're only down by about eight points. This is Jill White. At the charity stripe. Two a two for White. Thirty to twenty-one the score. It's Jade Wint bringing it up for the boxers down to Josuma Montron. Out of Fernandez. Fernandez floats it in for Elizabeth Williams. Williams, the sophomore captain, going to the basket. No good. And a jump ball. Williams in for Wint. Nice pass in the interior right there. That's what I'm talking about. They can't finish, unfortunately. Got to stop the ball right there and box out. Too easy of a second chance opportunity. Fernandez in for Williams. Williams almost can't handle it. Pressured by Scales. Fernandez sliding down to the floor on the other side. No good. It's an 11 point edge for the Rebels. And a uncontested three for number 13. And that's what I'm talking about. That one bounced off the rim, over the backboard, and still came down in bounds. Right again, Matt. Williams hands off to, uh, Fernandez rather, hands off to Williams. Montron to Nelani Montero. Montero out to Williams. Eight on the shot clock. Williams hands off to Wint. Wint with a short jumper, no good. And Walpole with the rebound. Too many rebels in the paint. And timeout called by the boxers as they trail 34 to 21. 
Boxes right now are in some trouble right now. They got to stop the bleeding. You know, unfortunately, down by 13. You know, they, they, they got to stop this running here. They brought the boxes need to um, be a little more aggressive on the offense side of the basketball. I just feel like, you know, they're just a half a step too, too slow right here going to the basket. They just be a little more aggressive going to the open. They got to contest these shots because um, the wall post, like, they're the real deal when it comes to three-point shooting. They got to contest these outside shots. 532 left in the third quarter. Winner of this game, of course, going up against the winner of Olive Rames and Needham. And that one's an interesting matchup as both of those teams only have two seniors on their roster. And that holds true with Walpole as well. Brockton with three seniors on their roster. So this is a very young tournament. It is. Fernandez to Wint. Wint's jumper no good. Walpole rebound, jump ball. Forced by Fernandez. Walpole with it. Trying to force it inside. Fernandez comes up with a steal. Fernandez driving baseline. Has it broken up and Walpole 2 on 0 the other way. A layup for number 23. No good. You dodge a bullet right there. I mean, you got to make those layups if you're a Walpole. No one's there to contest that shot. Got to make those. Three, no good. Third consecutive offensive board for the Rebels and a two hit by Sydney Scales. What a move right there, spinning down the paint with the left hand. And another three for the Rebels, this one getting out of hand, 39-23. Rebels on top as Montron can't handle the pass. Smith, and now number 22. Isadora Amazon into the game for Brockton. Went to Williams. Williams being harassed by Scales. Down low to Wint, Wint finding a hole off the bottom of the backboard, no good. And Wall pulled back the other way. Scales, overhead pass to number 21, wow. Joe White. Good gets passing a rebound. right there. Good passing right to the interior. Fortunately, couldn't get on the first try. Got on the second try to brought the box right now. Got to watch out because the score is starting to get a little too wide. Another timeout by the Boxers. It's now 41-23. Brockton down by 18. Oh, Nelly. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. Boy, listen, like I said before, this is a good test for the Brockton Boxers. See what type of team they got here. Good litmus test. Uh, they're going to face a little adversity. The reality is probably going to face you know, some more adversity. So going to be interesting to see that how and when and if the Broughton Boxers can make a comeback here, make the score kind of interesting. Seems as though Walpole has gotten their foul trouble under control. Only one foul against each of these teams. A couple of big games coming up in the next few weeks for the Boxers. The Boxer boys basketball team, listen, the place to be, January 16th, Staff Gymnasium, Brockton High School, 7 o'clock, Newbie, 
who are the boxers playing? Well, they're facing Brian, you know, a good friend of mine who coaches the team, Hugh Coleman. Actually, his birthday was a few, so it was happy birthday, Hugh. Um, actually, they struggled. They 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 had a they had a loss versus St. Mary's, a very good team actually in Lynn. The private school out there lost their first game of the season. Had a good article on one of their players, um, five three captain. Uh, Isaiah Thomas actually tweeted him out, which is pretty cool. And Boston Herald did a cool little documentary on the um, on their star point guard. Always interesting to see Coach Coleman right next to us. Oh, Coach, you probably when the things go flying. One of, one of the top coaches in the league. Big fan of his. Bounce pass to number 33. Her short two, no good. Now outside to Scales. Her three is no good. Eventually a two falls. It's 43-23, a 20-point edge. For the Rebels. And Alicia Fernandez at the line. The second foul against the Rebels of the half. It is silent in this gym right now. Silence. Speaking of silence, another award-winning documentary that I produced about four years ago. That was part of the string of one word has to start with the letter S documentaries. Yes, and then we uh, eventually got over that little phase and, and did other things. Travel called against Jade Wint. So 2.13 left. The Bronx is right now. Uh, they have Walpole they, right where they want him. Yeah, have him right where they want him. Right where was, they want him. Took the words right out of my mouth, Matt. Which is why give a shout out to, uh, to fellow Woodwing director, Paul Mandeville. Always uh, makes us have a tight bond the award-winning conversations that we have. There was a time a few years ago where one award-winning director did not recognize the other one's awards because he said if you won those in the last century, they shouldn't count. Yeah, we had an award-winning director, a little feud, if you will, but eventually Kula has prevailed and, you know, uh, we, we respect we, you know, we, we respect the award-winning uh, accolades. Another <laughs> illegal screen, this time called against number 33, Sawyer King. Couple of substitutions. Amazon. Long pass to Williams. Williams very athletically keeping it in bounds for the moment before it finds its way over the line. Counted in one for number 20, Emily Lund. A hit called against Fernandez. Lund for th three points is good. That was a very awkward free throw shooting form. Hey, you know what? 
that form has got them to a 21 point lead, so they're doing something, right? Nice up fake. That's Scales committing the foul and trying to plead her case. Yeah, never going to win that argument. Hail Mary for Fernandez. Complete under the basket. Her shot no good. Gets her own rebound. Now off the glass. No good. Now to play off of Brockton. 108 to go in the third quarter. And Brockton not doing themselves any favors. Now Fernandez with a rebound with exactly a minute left. Got to have confidence in your teammates. Number 10 was wide open. Layla DePina. Now number 12 driving baseline. That's Elizabeth Roach throwing it off of Fernandez's shin out of play. Block called against number 20, Emily Lund. Fernandez with it, handing off to Amazon. A three is no good. Shot clock off, 17 seconds left. Fernandez on the floor. And a jump ball called. Is it me or does Fernandez look gassed? I would say you're right on that one. It's the third quarter. You know, you find so much to go uphill to fight this deficit. You're putting so much energy towards that. You know, at some point, just run out of gas. You see it right there. Unable to grab the inbound pass. Walpole. Already in foul trouble, six against the Rebels now in this half. So next foul against the Rebels, puts Brockton in a shooting situation. Five seconds left in the third, a last second layup, no good, went with the rebound. Two seconds, will we see a half court shot? No. Buzzer sounds, the third quarter has come to an end, 46 to 25. The Rebels leading the Boxers by 21. Newby Brockton has to turn it on. They've got to do it quick. Yeah, I don't think they're going to turn it on today. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think this is a game where, you know, it's, it's a good game to kind of humble the Brockton Boxers, realize what they need to do. Not the end of the world. You know, it's only one game. Um, but I think it's a good test to see where the Brockton Boxers are at. And, they, you know, they're obviously they're not at Walpole's level right now, or at least for today. See what their weaknesses are. See how they're going to improve. Um, and kind of go from there. I'd, I'd give an opportunity right now to give some of my bench players a, a chance to get some uh, experience on the varsity team. And, and, and see it goes from there. I mean, it's 21-point lead. Walpole's showing no real weaknesses. If anything, they've gained strength in the third quarter. So, um, you know, let's we'll see if they brought the Brockton Boxers continue to fire hard. Let's hope, let's hope they can cut the deficit. But um, it's good. it's good learning touch for the Brockton Boxers. End of the third quarter, as is tradition. We want to thank the cast and crew for today's festivities. At the helm, leading the ship, as we mentioned, the award-winning director and producer, Paul Mandeville. Next to him, replay graphics, audio, and accoutes. Inside the nice warm gym, we have the prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow on camera. We also have Katya Andrade 
and jumping Jay Miller. Of course, you are listening to the sultry sounds of myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson, and the seven-time award-winning director and producer, Emmy-nominated Newbie Ratto. That might have been Newbie where the cooler heads prevailed in the little award-winning director and producer when you said, hey, I've got the Emmy, nom e Emmy nomination, you don't. I'm better. Well, you know what? Fellow watering directors, we don't, we don't, you know, gloat on our awards. We just acknowledge that there's been greatness accomplished on both sides, and we just, it's a mutual respect. Or at least that's what, you know, I, I, I let Paul believe that. You know, going in the fourth quarter and still have not had any type of uh, I mean, actually had to go to the concession shares myself and, and get a pack of M&Ms and Gatorade, considering the uh, breakfast of champions. Three-pointer no good. Offensive board for the Rebels. Number 21 off the glass in Jill White. Pretty much put this one out of hand. 50 to 27. The score wall pull on top. Another turnover by the boxers. Scales in alone off the glass and in, and Brockton's going to burn another timeout. 6 11 left in the fourth quarter. So brought them down by 25 points. Got them right where they want them. They'll make their comeback here in the next few minutes, though. But, um, you know, seriously, they brought the boxes. Hey, you know, they, they, they got dominant here today. Like I said before, it's one loss. Um, you know, it's not for, you know, a, a lack of effort. It's just a matter is, you know, the team today was better than you. And you got to find out where your weak spots are, weak spots are and, and, and work on that. You know, in practice, you know, I'm pretty sure Coach has a, a list of things he wants to work on, and he'll get to them. So barring a few small miracles, Brockton will go on to face the loser of the Oliver Ames and Needham game. We will have that for you on Brockton Community Access. That game at 6 o'clock here tomorrow night at Oliver Ames. The Walpole Rebels go on to face the winner of that game in the girls' title game. And that game at 7.30 here at Oliver Ames tomorrow night. Have both of them here for you on Brockton Community Access. Nine games in four days for the BCA sports team. As if eight games and three wasn't enough, we'll finish off with hockey against Milton. With a puck drop at 1 o'clock at Easy Off Arena on Saturday. Fernandez comes up with the steal. To Williams. Williams back in for Fernandez. And just losing it. But getting it back is Fernandez as she's fouled. Hit called against Jill White. Now a one and one shooting situation for the boxers. Fernandez good on her first. 52-28. Now the score. Now the refs are going to discuss whether that basket was good or not. They decide not. Walpole's coach is confused. Fernandez 2-2 two two at the line, 52-29 the score. Hey, 
Lanchester. Stopping, popping. It'll be waved off. Another illegal screen called. Williams to Lorenzo. Lorenzo's three, no good. Elizabeth Roach, the sophomore, coming in for the Rebels. Down low to number 40, Natalia Amaral. She puts it off the glass and in 54-29. And another turnover for the Boxers. Carey called against Walpole. Lorenzo in for Williams. Lorenzo down low for Fernandez. Fernandez driving baseline, loses it. Picked up by the Rebels. This is Roach over to Scales. Scales to Roach, Roach for three, no good. Coming up short, Scales grabbing the loose ball. Now Scales for three is good. 57 to 29 now the score. Williams, pump fake. Now to Fernandez. Williams from way downtown, no good. Lorenzo with the rebound. Back out to Williams. There's definitely something off about Annalisa Fernandez today. Fernandez with the ball now. Short floater, no good. Walpole rebound. 3.15 left. Three-pointer, no good. Offensive rebound to Lund. Over to Scales, her three is good. 60 to 29, it is a 31 point lead for the Rebels. Went to Lorenzo, she hawks up a long three, in and out. It's gonna be out of play off of Jayla Smith. Five subs for the boxers, Jamari Johnson Rebecca Tannis, Nelani Montero, Nairomi Forbes, and Josilma Montron. The boxers on the floor now. Montron to Forbes. And a jump ball. Rockton will retain possession. Forbes to Montron, back to Forbes. 2.12 to go in the fourth quarter, 31 point edge for the Rebels. Long two, no good. Out of playoff of Brockton. Now 
Another offensive rebound for the Rebels and a hit is going to be called against Nairobi Forbes. Newby, I would have to say that this game ultimately came down to rebounding. Rebounding and, I, you know, came down to this. Listen, let's be frank with you. Walpole right now is just a better team. Came down to talent, too. You know, came down to talent. And, and right now, Walpole is more talented right now than the Broughton Boxes. One and a half minutes to go in game one of the All Rams Holiday Tournament. Number 25 with some nice work, Amanda Minsk. Driving inside and is fouled. Number 20 at the line for a couple of shots, Emily Lund. Mark Johnson with the rebound. with the rebound 62 to 29 now the score Walpole is a big 33 point edge for the Rebels shot clock is off it's brought in with the last second possession short jumper no good Johnson comes down with the loose ball a foul Called with 9.6 seconds left. Montron good on her first attempt. That cuts the lead to 32. Two of two is Montrond. About 9.6 seconds left. Walpole's gonna waste out the clock. 62 to 31. Easier score. And that will be the final. Walpole moves on to the title game against the winner of Oliver Ames and Needham. Brockton will face the loser of that game in the consolation game tomorrow night. Newby. 31 point victory for the Rebels. What was the difference maker? Difference was, I think ultimately, talent was the huge difference. I think another reason is, you know, ultimately, I, I thought the Broughton Box weren't aggressive enough offensively. I thought they were aggressive enough offensively. I thought they created way too many turnovers. And to be quite frankly, they really, after that first quarter, I thought they were going to make a run, you know, towards the, uh, towards the second quarter, but it just seemed the Broughton Box was never able to. To catch up, and then once the third quarter started, it was you know it was good night, Irene. I thought Walpole did a good job just putting the gauntlet down, being aggressive, and the score reflected that. 62 to 31, your final score. The Walpole Rebels getting the victory against the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, we'll see you next game. Birdman, Birdman. Levi. Levi.